Yo, Big D back with a division round Jaguar Chiefs episode in the Big D podcast. But for bringing my Chiefs friend, please subscribe, like, and share the Spunky Spectrum Sword YouTube page. But see all my content uploaded at UFC 283 yesterday. So check it out. Also, check out the Big D podcast for all your audio listeners on Spotify and Apple. So whether he's talking NASCAR, weather, or Chiefs, my next guest is all is always available. So, uh, Dennis, we talked super wild call weather last week. Now we're talking each of our teams. You're a Chief fan, and I'm a Jack fan. And guess what? Both our teams are me in the vision round. So I figured it would be a good week to have an episode, right? <laughs> Absolutely, and you know it's a, it's gonna be a great game. Uh, I think this is a matchup that. Um, I, I don't think the so-called experts will be right on this one. I I, I would not be giving many points <laughs> to the Jaguars here uh, if I was betting. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. Both teams have defenses that could be very opp- opportunistic and can come up with that big stop on a third down and, you know, have a put pressure on the quarterback and, and get the sack and, and, you know, get their, uh, the defense off the field. So I'm not even sure. I don't have a really good confidence level on whether I would bet the over under on this as well. I I think this is a game that I'd stick away, stay away from watching or or from betting and just enjoy and watch. But boy, I guess eight and a half points is what the chiefs are favored. They're going to have a hard time covering that. Well, if you think that, well, we've already seen these teams meet up once because in week 10, the uh, your Kansas City Chiefs beat my Jacks 27 to 17, where that Pat Mahomes got shocker. Pat Mahomes threw four touchdowns against us. What else is new? <laughs> yeah, and, and here's the thing is the Jaguars are a much better team right now than they were at week 10. And I know that sounds kind of funny to say because week 10 is pretty late in the season, but the Jaguars really got good down the stretch as far as their defense being able to make some stops. And and that's going to be the key. Can the defense make the stops? Are we going to need to see enough of the rain and snow to, you know, kind of give a little slick footing? Will that slow teams down? I just don't know how to read this game as far as, you know, I, I think the Chiefs will win but I don't think the Chiefs will win by a large margin. I think this is a three or four point game, you know, and it's, uh, and I don't know if it's going to be a high scoring game, but Trevor Lawrence is great. Mahomes is great. You know, there's no doubt about that, but it, it comes down to playoff football. You try to slow the game down. You try to, you know, wear a little clock out is, is Andy Reid's way to go. So if the Chiefs get a, a lead here, if Mahomes gets off to his usual Mahomes-ish start, I, I think they try to run the ball a little bit more than you would see the Chiefs do during the regular season. That seems to be the Andy Reid way of doing it. It's going to be interesting to see because they're going to have a three-headed monster at running back this week because it looks like Clyde Edwards-Hilaire will be back off of the IR. And, of course, Pacheco has been really solid. But McKinnon has been the X factor for that team. Uh, they won't get Hardman back, so that's one less fast guy that they've got. But they come into this playoff game with everybody in the wide receiver back group except for Hardman that's uh, going to be healthy. So Tony's healthy. you got uh, MVS that is, is healthy. And you got Juju who's in probably the best shape of his uh of his year this year um, and Travis Kelsey had a week off. So you've got receivers galore and it's going to be very interesting to see how they game plan. And hey, I'm looking forward to, to what goofy uh, play Andy Reid can put together. It's, it's always fun, but here's the thing is I would expect to see a goofy play by the Jaguars too, you know, their coach is, is equally as, as goofy when it comes to some of the uh, the things that he can come up with as well. Hey, thinking back to that Week 10 game, there were, there were a couple of things I remember for that game. One, 
Despite Kansas City winning that game by 10 points, the Chiefs turned it over three times. And, I mean, Jackson proved that last Saturday night that you could turn it over five times and still win. But typically, if you turn it over three times against a really good quarterback, you don't stand much of a chance. And B, Kansas City sacked Mullins five times in that game when Jacksonville really didn't pressure Mahomes much. No, and what the Chiefs did so well in that game is they, and, and they've done this against a lot of good mobile quarterbacks. And no, Lawrence isn't like Justin Fields. He's not going to run for 100 yards on you. But he gets out of the pocket, and that's when he's dangerous. You know, if, if he, he buys himself that extra bit of time, and that's when he could be really dangerous. And the Chiefs have been doing a good job of not letting those guys get out of their pocket. They've been making the pocket collapse on them. They get good pressure up the up the middle, um, and then they get the outside guys on the edge that are are not only doing a good job of getting a strong rush on, but they're also containing uh, the quarterback, not letting him buy some extra time. And, and it's going to be interesting to see how Trevor Lawrence bounces back off of that really horrible start to the game he had last week. I mean. When you throw four interceptions, it's it's just crazy. I mean, but for him to be able to bounce back like that showed me a lot of this kid because I'm not so sure last year he bounces back from that. I think last year he just kind of continues to make mistakes. This year he seems to be much more poised, and I give it all to the coach. I mean, the coaching improvement this year for the Jaguars has, has been incredible. Um, last year, they didn't have a coach. They <laughs> had a guy who, who, who was good at, you know, dancing in bars, I think. But, uh, that was his strength. But now they've got a, a very good coach who I still shake my head and I'm wondering, why did Philly ever get rid of this guy? But, you know, his their loss is uh, the Jaguars' gain. And Jaguars fans can look at this team and, you know, I look at this team and I say, how are they going to be with, with Ridley next year if he does come back from suspension? How are they going to be when this team adds another great playmaker in the offseason? To go, you know, Etienne and, and Hasty, you know, Jamaco Hasty didn't get mentioned much by anybody, but that's a kid that has put in some good plays and been able to break some big gains when he's been called on. They've got a lot of these like little bits and pieces that all go into a good offense. Imagine how good they're going to be when you add Ridley next year. Well, you mentioned coaches, and uh, this is an interesting matchup because both coaches are going to be very familiar with each other because Doug Peterson said not only played under Andy Reid when he was with the Packers, I'm not mistaken, back in the 90s, right? But he also coached so, with Andy Reid. So yeah. both these guys run similar West Coast offense. So I, there won't be any surprises in this game. No, and, and both coaches are, you know, the kind of guys that, you know, I, I look at some coaches in the NFL – and they're really good at preparing their teams before the week before and getting them ready to play. But there are certain coaches that just aren't good at making those mid game adjustments. Both of these coaches are really good at making the adjustments on the fly. They, they really have a good knack for picking up what the other team's trying to do and knowing how to counter it. Yeah, and uh, we also and we also see like creative play calls. I mean, we saw the uh, Week 18 ring around the rosy from the Chiefs, and that one, <laughs> and, uh, and the the last and the uh, fourth down play call where everyone thought Trevor was just going to take on a quarterback draw, and at the end took it up the sideline, looking looking like a some combination of Barry Sanders, Jim Brown, and Walter Payton. That was a great fake by Trevor Lawrence. He really sold that. The team sold it with the formation. You know, they have three guys in the backfield like that. 
that's what we've been seeing a lot of teams do when they sneak because they've been getting this big push behind the quarterback and and they really sold it. If you looked at the way that defense bid on that play, it was it was just amazing to see. But you know, I, I just I keep saying this, but you know, I'm just, I'm just glad Ridley's not available right now because this team with Ridley next year is going to be much much better. And they've got a really good defense. It's not a great defense yet, but they've got some good pieces on that defense. If they add a little bit more for next year, this is a team on the rise now. And, and that's got to be something as a Jaguars fan that you got to be really happy with because last year it looked like this was just going to be the bottomless pit of, of despair. I mean, be honest, be honest, 20, I knew 2020 was going to be bad, but I was hoping we get through. 2021 annoyed the you know what I mean, but you know what? This year has come out of surprise. I didn't think the Jags be playing on the veteran in the, the veteran round anyway. I mean, whatever happened, I feel like this is exceeding all expectations. And yeah, yeah, I feel like the Jags may be a year ahead of schedule. But I think the Jackson needs quite possibly another. Linemen need to keep Evan Ingram, and then on defense, probably need another corner. But you know, with Trevor Lawrence playing the way he is, you've always got a chance, no matter if you're facing Justin Herbert or that Mahomes guy. Yeah, and that's the key: is uh, Trevor Lawrence is turning into an incredibly good quarterback because he he doesn't he he's getting what what good quarterbacks have. And that's the short memory. You know, if you have one bad throw, the heck with it. I'm just going to go out there and I'm, I'm going to make you, you know, pay for, for it next time. And, you know, this is, again, and, you know, they did a great job signing the wide receivers that they did because they, they picked up some, some people that, that worked out. And I, I, consider Evan Ingram a wide receiver right now because he hasn't yeah. lined up a tight end in a long time. But yeah, that was a, just a big wide receiver. I don't think I've big. seen him block once this year. No, no, but he's he's a, a great addition to that team. This is what you expected of him back when he was with the Giants. This is what he showed in his first year or two with, with the Giants that he had this ability to just take over and, you know, take over a drive. Now, he doesn't have that Travis Kelsey thing yet where he takes over every, the whole game, but he does have that ability to beat his guy consistently on a drive. They'll make the adjustment against him, but, you know, he is a, he is a big body and a big target for Trevor Lawrence, and he also has got that knack of finding the open space. Now, he might have less open space with Kansas City because I'm not sure, so sure they're going to play as much zone as some other teams have tried to play against the Jaguars. Uh, I would expect Steve Spagnuolo to play a bit more man to man. It seemed like the Chargers played someone played some zone and tried to keep the short pass and make Trevor go deep. I think Steve Spagnuolo is going to come after him and try and force Trevor in the into mistakes. Yeah, I, I think you're going to see a lot of five and six man rushes. I think it's going to be just all out to to put pressure on the QB. And and the big key is, can the Jaguars get a running game going? If they can get any kind of a running game going in this game, then that kind of makes the the decisions on how many guys to send a little bit different. But it, it's going to be a great chess match of the coaches. You've got outstanding coaches on both sides of the ball. And, you know, you've got head coaches who really know how to take charge at that moment. Um, it, this is going to be a fun game to watch. I mean, you know, yeah, I wear my Chiefs fandom, you know, up, up front and, and that, but I don't think this is going to be a blowout for the Chiefs by any stretch of the imagination. This is going to be a tight game. It's going to come down to the turnovers as it always does in the playoffs. And it's going to come down to who can make that one extra big play um, to, to 
get your team, you know, keep a drive going on a third and long. Who converts those third down plays that, and can force the other guys? And it might come down to field position, too. I mean, these are, are two teams that have been really good at that field position game of, of making the other team march the whole field, you know? So it's it's going to be interesting to see how this all emerges, but what what fun we have in the AFC watching quarterbacks like we do, you know, it, it's, you know, you're not watching, you know, 45 year old guys who were great uh, or, you know, 38 year old guys that think they're greater than they are at this point in their career. You're seeing the best young talent. And the crazy thing is Patrick Mahomes keeps getting better. You know, like the season he's having this year without Tyreek Hill is, is shutting up all the critics that said, well, you know, without Tyreek Hill, what's he going to do? I was looking at him going, we weren't very good last year at times with Tyreek Hill. People figured out that version of the Chiefs offense. And my feeling was, eh, Andy Reid, pretty smart guy, going to sit down with, with the enemy. They're going to figure out a way to attack using the pieces and, and parts that they have. And they've got better wide receivers from one to four than they had last year. They had obviously the best wide receiver in the business with Tyreek Hill, but it dropped off. They did not have a good second, third, or fourth receiver. This year they've got options. And McKinnon is just playing out of his mind. And that's something we didn't see all, all at this time last year either. So I, this Chiefs offense got better this year. And that goes against what all of the so-called experts were thinking. And, you know, meanwhile, you got the Jaguars who that come from behind move. I mean, granted, they had a little help because the other team just fell apart. But it still took a lot of great plays to, to rebound from that big of a deficit. Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird because a lot of people thought, oh, Patrick Mahomes not going to be bad. And I'm like, oh, wait, he's going to win the MVP this year. <laughs> and we saw the Packers trade, trade Devontae Adams and what happened to Aaron Rodgers? He, oh, wait, he regressed. And, oh, Pat Mahomes look like Pat Mahomes. The crazy thing is Derek Carr got worse with Devontae Adams. Now, how do you do that? I just, I don't, I don't know how you do that. Unless Father maybe, maybe Vegas's problem wasn't their call necessarily, but maybe the fact that the Raiders couldn't hold the two score lead for some mysterious yeah. reason. Maybe the Raiders just got lucky last year with winning so many of those crazy games. Might have been better coaching last year because when that guy took over as interim coach, he showed a lot uh, to me. And I I was uh, amazed that they didn't bring him back this year, considering all that he had to put up with. He's got a coach that leaves in disgrace. He's got a player that gets arrested for vehicular, you know, manslaughter. And, you know, all these things that could have derailed that team last year. And, he fought through it, and they they played better. Now, granted, they had an easier schedule, I think, last year than they did this year, and it caught up to them. But you know, it's just when you when you gain the best wide receiver in the business, and Devonte Adams had a great year, but Derek Carr did not have a consistent enough year in in throwing the ball, and their defense didn't do well. I mean, they they had a lot of failures on on you know, but. The season they got out of Josh Jacobs, they should have been able to put up with some other issues, but they couldn't. And I, I put that down to bad coaching. You know, a brand new coach didn't know how to put them together. But uh, but getting back to the Jaguars and the Chiefs, because that's the headline this this uh, week. I'm looking forward to many years of these teams going at it. I think it's I, I don't think this is a one and done for this group of these two teams. I think these could be the two teams that are facing off consistently uh, in the in the future, in the near future, uh, to see who goes to the Super Bowl. 
I mean, Trevor's, what, 23? Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, Justin Herbert. The AFC, the AFC's chock full of young quarterbacks. Deep, 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 deep. And it's it's going to be crazy because you, you do. I mean, you just mentioned, you know, a bunch of them here. But, you know, Justin Herbert is, is actually playing worse than all the other names you named, which is crazy, isn't it? Uh, he is such a talented quarterback. And then if Tua comes back um, and can actually play a full season and learns how to take a hit and learns how to avoid it. Um, oh, Lamar Jackson yeah, the, for that reason. Oh, Lamar Jackson, if he's still in Baltimore. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. The AFC is just packed with talented quarterback. And you look across the way at the NFC, it, NFC and – you know, anytime Jared Goff is in the top five of quarterbacks in your in your division or you know in your conference, you know you're lacking young talent right now. Uh, while you're here, uh, I cannot I cannot finish it, record this podcast without asking you. Uh, you know, the weather in this time of year in the, the Greater Kansas City area can be anything. It could be. 50 degrees and sunny like it was this past weekend. Oh, it could be 10 degrees with a 20 mile an hour wind. So uh, right now we're recording late Thursday night. What is the projected forecast for Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Central Standard Time? Central Time. Going to be a mix of rain and snow that will transition to snow. Not going to be a lot of precipitation. Um, you know, look at if you add up and melt the snow and, and combine that with the rain you're going to get, it's less than a quarter inch. So it's not going to be heavy precipitation and it's not going to be strong winds. So just minor, very minor effects on the game. If you get a little bit heavier batch of rain and snow coming through one little portion of the game, then maybe you get a, a turnover or two, but not going to be heavy precipitation at all. Um, but it is going to be a little bit interesting. But, you know, by Kansas City standards, not bad with the high temperature around 37 degrees and um, the winds won't be a factor. So uh, no major wind problem for uh, either team here, which uh, should lead to some very entertaining offense. Yeah, thinking back to that uh... – Jaguars Jets game were literally where we played in rain and wind, and I think the whole league played in miserable weather that weekend. I'm like, can we avoid a can we avoid a weekend because everybody's playing outside where literally there are no bad weather games? Yeah, it's it's amazing because even by Buffalo standards, I mean they're going to get a little bit of snow, which could even be mixed in with some rain for them. That's how much uh, cold air is lacking across the northern U.S. right now. But even there, it's not going to be windy. It's not going to be heavy precipitation. So for this time of the year, it's actually going to be uh, pretty nice weather and then no problems out in San Francisco and no problems for Philadelphia. I mean, it's January football, and uh, it wouldn't be playoff football without a little without a little snow in one of these games, right? Yeah, and and the thing is, the pattern is shifting for the following week. So for the AFC Championship game, you know, assuming my Chiefs survive, and if it is Buffalo, it's going to be indoors down in Atlanta, and that's going to be good news for for both teams because. I have a feeling the following week is going to be uh, more winter-like in Kansas City for sure. And uh, you know, if if the uh, you know if the Bengals do upset Buffalo, then the Chiefs get the host for how many in a row would that be for AFC Championships? It's been a few. <laughs> I've lost. I've lost count. I've lost yeah, it's time. insane. It's insane because I think three in a row is the record before. And now it's, you know, up, it would be up to five. So it's, a, but here's the thing as a Chiefs fan, I don't care that it'll be a neutral site. I think that was a smart decision by the NFL and in, in, in a very weird situation. 
Yeah, so quickly, what do you think will be one key for your Chiefs to win on Saturday night? They're going to need to get to Trevor Lawrence. They're going to need to get a couple of sacks, and they're going to need to force a turnover to a bad throw. Um, they've been able to be very opp opportunistic in the defensive backfield at times, but they've also given up some big plays. So they need to keep the pressure on Trevor Lawrence. They need to get to him. That's going to be the big key. Uh, I, I, I've gone back and forth over what I, what, how the Jacks have got a chance to win, but, uh, to me, it's simple. I think Travis Etienne needs to play the game of yeah. his life because we saw what happened with that one big play. He got over. It seems like when Travis Etienne gets going, this Jaguar offense is different. We saw... I think it was uh, the Giant game where he got over 100 yards and he got 100 over 100 in the London game, over 100 in the Vegas game. Didn't really do much against you guys, but over 100 against Dallas. Big plays against the Texans. If Travis Etienne can hit a big play, whether as a runner or receiver, I think it makes the Jaguars different because he's got that change pace. Jaguars have got good wide receivers, but I'm not sure they've got a game-breaking wide receiver. Maybe Zay Jones, but he's not a number one. He's more a no. three. Christian Kirk's a real nice possession wide receiver. And then Marvin Jones is the dependable guy. But Travis Ethan's got that Gideon. He can make big plays. And we've, and we've seen where uh, McKinnon's literally catch and touch. And it's like, if you, if you would have put bet on McKinnon touchdown the last seven or eight weeks, he literally would have checked the box every single week. Where Travis Etienne can be that guy for the Jackals. And I think in this game, the Jackals are going to need Etienne because guess what Jackson, guess what Jacksonville's defense wants? They want Pat Mahomes drinking Gatorade and not, and not him <laughs> doing his dipsy do whatever. Yeah, they the Jaguars need to keep Mahomes off the field. And the best way to do that is with the running game. Now, the Chiefs this year have been able to get good penetration and have been able to slow down some running backs like ETN, the guys that are more of the scat back type. They've had more trouble against the big bruiser types. But I think the key is, you know, Jaguars cannot get behind the chains. They, they cannot lose yardage on an ATN run. They cannot try to get them wide and, and lose four or five yards because that's when the Chiefs will tear, tear them apart on second and long and third and long. They need to keep the, – the, they need to play, you know, ahead of the chains. They need to have third and makeable, third and four. They cannot be in third and 12s. They'll get eaten up. So that's going to be the key is to get ATN outside. I think he will he could do better against the Chiefs as a receiver than a running back in this game. If only the Jags would let him catch the <laughs> ball because literally every single week they throw him the ball one stupid time. That I do not understand because he is such a playmaker. The other thing, and I'm going to call it right here, you're going to see a big play by Jamal Agnew. There, there's going to be a scripted play for him, whether it's a jet sweep or whether it's, you know, just something that they're going to use him to try to get the Chiefs defense a little off off base, uh, you know, because the Chiefs are going to try to play in the backfield a lot. And if they can get the ball outside, whether it's to Agnew, whether it's to ETN, whether it's to Hasty, get them out there in in space with the ball. Um, I think they got a chance of making a couple of big plays on the Chiefs. That's going to be the key is utilize that speed is going to be the big key. And we saw last year what the Bills did because Gabriel Davis is still scoring touchdowns against you guys from last year's division round. <laughs> that is very true. And thankfully, I don't think uh, they have anybody on the Jaguars that can quite get as deep that fast and still be really good at catching the ball. Well, I mean, the Honey Badger was basically going the first series of the game, and then look what happened. Yeah. Gabriel Davis went four, scored four touchdowns. 
Yeah, they the Chiefs, that is one place that they really improved. Love the honey badger, love the intensity that he brought to this game. But Justin Reed has been better in the in the defensive backfield this year. They got younger and they got faster. And over time, that Chiefs defense is actually going to get pretty good. All right, Dennis. So uh, thanks for hopping on. Uh, hopefully this uh, Jaguar Chiefs team can be just as exciting as uh, last year, as last weekend's wild card game was for my team. And uh, hopefully uh, we get like a classic where both quarterbacks throw for seven touchdowns. <laughs> It should be a good game, and uh, it'll be fun rooting against your guys this week. Uh.